Surgical site infections are the leading cause of unplanned readmissions following surgery. This video was created to demonstrate the proper scrub technique because it is the first step in preventing surgical site infections for your patients. So it really begins with you at the scrub sink. This is meant to be a series of instructional videos that can be followed by a quiz at the SIS website to confirm your knowledge on sterile technique in the operating room. Please enjoy our video series. Stephanie is a medical student from the University of Alberta and she's going to demonstrate the steps on how to do a scrub. Now it's very simple, we've broken it down into eight steps on how to prepare to do a scrub and eight steps on how to do the actual scrub. So number one, start off with having clean scrubs for the day. If they get soiled throughout the day, change them. Tuck in the shirt into the pants and this prevents any microbes or cells from being shed. And never wear your scrubs outside of the hospital because we don't want environmental contaminants to come into our operating room. Have your ID available and accessible. That's all you really need. Do not bring food, backpacks, and leave that lab coat at the door. Have your surgical cap on and also all the hair tucked in. Eye protection is very important because this prevents infectious materials from splashing into your eyes. Even my glasses are not enough because things can go from the side as you can see. Have your mask on. When you go into an operating room, this is essential if any sterile field has been established. So that means if instruments are open, you need to have your mask on. If a patient's being operated on, have your mask on. Jewelry. No jewelry. These contain infectious microbes. They can fall and even contaminate a patient. They can also scratch a patient. Nails should be cleaned and polish free and no artificial nails because they also increase the contaminants and potentially can tear any gloves that you're wearing. And last but not least, shoe covers. This is important if your shoes have ever been worn outside of the hospital. Now reposition your glasses and uh, get yourself comfy because once you've scrubbed, it's going to be very challenging to do it again. Timing is very important for a water-based scrub. If it's the first scrub of the day, it will be five minutes. Each subsequent scrub will be three minutes. Now let's start off with our eight steps. The first one is to clean the fingernails. To do this, you'll have to wet your hands with soap and water. Clean all of your nails free of debris and you don't have to do this step any other time of the day unless they're visibly dirty. Now wet the scrub brush. This is where the timer begins. So wet the brush, start the time, and now scrub your nails for 30 seconds. Go on to scrub the fingers. You want to hit every aspect of the fingers, including the webs, the front, and the back. Do the palm of the hand for 30 seconds and then the back of the hand for 30 seconds. Repeat those steps for the opposite hand. Again, doing the nails, the fingers, all aspects of the fingers, and then going on to the palm and the back of the hand. Now you're ready to go on to the forearm. So this is 30 seconds, whether it's the first scrub of the day or subsequent scrubs. They're always 30 seconds on your forearm. So start at the wrist and go all the way down to two inches past the elbow. Discard your sponge. Start to rinse. Keep your arms tilted upwards. This is important to be in that upright position, tilted forward, and we don't want any of the water to drip from a non-sterile area into the hands that you've just cleaned. Dripping is okay because now back away from the sink, go towards the door and a sterile towel will be awaiting for you in the operating room by your scrub nurse. The number one thing you have to do before using any waterless scrub is wash your hands. She's going to wash your hands and make sure you do that with soap and water all the way up to the wrists. And if this is the first scrub of the day, she'll take the nail pick so that she can clean underneath her nails. Make sure your hands are completely dry before you start the process of the waterless scrub application. And now you're ready to do the first pump. So here's the first pump. It goes into one hand and you'll take your nails of your opposite hand into that palm and apply it. And make sure you cover all aspect of your nails and underneath the nails. 
Now with the excess solution in that palm, take it to that opposite hand that you just cleaned the nails and take it all the way down the arm. This is the pump that is going to be covering your wrist all the way to your elbow. If you have a larger hand, you may need more than one pump. Now you're ready to do the exact same procedure for the opposite hand. You have now completed your arms. Of note, she's always gone from the cleanest area to the dirtiest area. Now she's ready for the third pump. Take your third pump. And this is the one that's going to get all aspects of your fingers and hands. Now you're ready for the last step. Rub the product in until it's completely dry. Wait for the scrub nurse to assist you. If you've used a water-based scrub, ask for a sterile towel to dry the hands off. Place your first hand underneath one side of the towel and use it to wipe your opposite hand and arm. Hold your arms out and put them into the sleeves of the gown. Shrug your arms into the gown until your hands are down to the ends of the sleeves. An unsterile member of the team will tie the back of your gown because remember, this is unsterile. Insert the right hand into the open surgical glove. Use the right hand to open the left glove. You can now pull up the sleeves of your gown so they are not bunched up in your gloves. You can now put on your second pair of gloves. Untie the knot at the front. This is the last process to do. It's sterile, so you can touch it now that you have the gloves on. Hand the right end to the scrub nurse. Turn 360 degrees, take it back and tie it. As you can see here on Stephanie, the areas that will be considered sterile are the parts that she can see. So it will be from the line of the axilla for the front all the way to the top of her working field. For the arms, it will be from the elbows all the way to the cuffs. And the cuffs are never considered sterile and should always be covered by a glove. The back of the gown is never considered sterile, again, because you can't see it. So I want you to remember this because when you're working in a sterile environment, you need to know which components can actually touch uh, another sterile object. After your work is done in the OR, you'll need to scrub out. Undo the front tie on your gown. Ask for assistance to undo the ties at your back. Remove and discard the gown. Remove and discard the gloves. Make sure to remove them so your bare hands do not contact the dirty outsides of the gloves. You can do this by hooking underneath the roll glove. Remove and discard the mask. If the operation is still in progress, leave your mask on until you exit the OR. Last but not least, wash your hands. You're all done.